Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Blessings to you and welcome to Ask the Messengers. This is a show that deals with drug and, 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 and recoveries, but more importantly, we want you to know that Jesus Christ is more than able to set anyone free who's dealing with drug addiction or drug abuse. And so we want you to know that this show here is all about what God is able to do in the life of someone even though they may have fallen, just as the Bible says, uh, that if there's someone there to pick them up, and we know that Jesus can pick you up no matter what you're dealing with. And so this show deals with real people and real stories. So there are no actors, there are no actresses, no one's being, being paid for their, for their craft. This show is literally about people's lives and what they've gone through. And that's why it's called Ask the Messengers because they have a message from their lives. <laughs> and I love, this, I love the saying that we have in, in, in church. It says, God will take your mess and turn it into a message. Amen. And so today we are going to be dealing with a topic that I believe is very important for uh, today's viewing audience. We're gonna be dealing with veterans in recovery. That's right, those who defend our country, those who serve in the military in whatever way, uh, they, they often come home and dealing with some of the issues, some of the things they've seen, they find themselves addicted uh, to drugs or even to other things. And so today we wanna share that information with you. And so we are so happy to be able to provide such information to you, the viewer. So listen, we want you also to know, you can feel free to contact us. The information is there on the screen. Make sure you kind of, we want to hear your comments, your concerns, uh, or your feedback about the show. Listen, we're going we're gonna to send you to this very quick clip uh, and tell you about this veteran and, and his testimony and his recovery as he's going through. Watch this. We'll be right back. What was my drug of choice? Uh, marijuana, psychedelics, alcohol, meth, and pills. How old was I when I first tried drugs? I was 15 years old when I first tried drugs and kept going till I was 25. It almost destroyed it in many regards. Um, different members wouldn't associate with me. There was times where different members and I would get into physical fist fights. Uh, there was lack of trust and just a whole mess of issues that went on for 10 solid years. I would do it in my closet at home or in my room. I wasn't a go out and do drugs type person. I would try to keep it a secret the best I can. Yes, I did. I would bounce around from job to job every six or seven months because of just getting bored and wanting to constantly be home getting high and not show up. and then just leave the job and move on to the next one a couple of weeks later and do that process for five or six months and then bounce around to another job for another couple of months and keep that cycle going. We're back. Today's show, again, it's about veterans in recovery. And listen, I got a very special co-host with me today. It is a pastoral takeover today. <laughs> That's right, the pastors are running the show. And so today, I, my co-host, is Pastor Timothy Thompson. Pastor Thompson, how you doing, sir? I'm doing fine, doing fine. First of all, let me thank you, Pastor uh, Lester Lewis and uh, George Page for inviting us here Amen. on the show. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm Pastor Thompson. I'm Executive Director of Emmanuel House Recovery and Transitional and Peer-to-Peer -peer Program. Amen, for veterans. All right, that's, that's, that's a great thing to know that you have a ministry that is directly geared toward ministering to those veterans, those who have defended our country and put their lives on the line. Now someone is there interceding and putting themselves in the gap for them. I appreciate that so much and I'm sure others will. And so we're thankful. Listen, we got some guests today uh, and they're gonna share their stories. And so Pastor, would you go ahead and introduce them? Uh, we got two, two vets here. There's uh, in, in Emmanuel House, one uh, alumni in Emmanuel House, now work for Emmanuel House. Uh, first is Jerry, mm -hmm. amen, and John. 
Mm -hmm. Amen. So, all right, welcome, gentlemen. How you doing? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Great, you great. We can't wait to hear your your your, your stories, man. We can't wait. Amen. I was, uh, you know, I, I started Emmanuel House because I had four brothers that died in in, in active addiction, and um, I was on drugs for 24 years myself. You know, by the grace of God, you know, He had delivered me. And the last, but uh, third brother who died, um, I had uh, did his eulogy, and I uh, came home so distraught that I asked God, Lord, use me and let me do whatever I have to do to help another family not to go through what we've been going through. And in the process, the Lord spoke to me right then, that day on a Wednesday. So I got, he told me, get up, go across the street. I was in a large apartment complex, asked the director, tell him that I said that you want to, I want you to open up a recovery program. And I went over there and asked, did exactly what the Lord said? And she got hysterical. She said, I know God because I just prayed to them last night. Mm. And, yeah. and so it was that when she said, I, I would give you a, 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 a townhouse and you ain't got to pay another for six months free. Come on now. And I ain't had no money. So I knew it had to be the Lord. <laughs> that's, God. that's God. That's God. And 21 years later, here we are sitting with two of the vets uh, that we have. And I was a, we are the first program, Emmanuel House was the first program that accepted homeless vets without any money. Wow. Amen. And we was out there doing the things that God wanted us to do, and he delivered us, and now we are running a, a program with 120 vets. Amen. Right. Amen. And when they leave our program, they go into permanent housing. That's right. Amen. That's, that's, that's beautiful. That's Amen. Beautiful. That's, yes, sir. Thank God. Yes, sir. So, so I want to say, as, as, as Jerry, amen, so uh, how was your life before you came into Emmanuel House? Well, I was traveling from place to place. You know, every two months I go from place to place, and uh, and when I got here to Michigan with my family and everything else, you know, my daughters kind of talked me into staying. So I did well, interviewed d different places, the dorm and everything else. And I ran across a lot of long lines from that. So we made your house. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're the one that, that, that talked me into going ahead and picking the manual house along with the VA. And then once I got there, I've been in love ever since. So what drugs were you on before you came? Uh, um, and we cocaine. Came, and cocaine. Straight up cocaine. Gives it. Powder cocaine. So you have any kids? I have three kids. I have a son, a minister, and I have two daughters. One work for Christ and the other do hair. Amen. So what kind of difficulty did it cause you while you was um, addicted to cocaine? Well, it didn't cause any rupture between them because we, they was raised here. You know, but I helped supported them while, you know, away. I was in Florida and they was here. Okay. Right? So you did as much as you can by You're being right. addicted on yes, cocaine, sir. huh? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. All right. So, so um, John, I mean, you a vet, a man, and you came in. Uh, how many, how long ago was that? Uh, I came in at, uh, let me think, the 27th of May in 2014. Mm, no exact day and time, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> my, 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 my. Okay. So, so how was your life before you came into Emmanuel House? Uh, what, what's your drug of choice? Uh, my drugs of choice was alcohol and marijuana and uh, pain pills. Okay. Mm. And uh, before I got into, before I came to E-House, my life was a train wreck. Um, I was homeless. Uh, my family wanted nothing to do with me. Um, I had no, for my friends that abandoned me, I was uh, morally bankrupt. I had no life left. I was just... Or a broke, but well, I was a broken person before I came. Mm -hmm. so, so let me ask you the question because yeah, obviously you guys are, are veterans. You served in the military. Um, uh, would you say that one of the reasons that you 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 began to use is because of uh, some of the things that you may have seen or been involved with in your in your service? Well, I started with uh, cocaine uh, in Germany. Okay. Okay. You know, uh, uh, matter of fact, back in 1981. Okay. You know. Okay. And, uh, and it, it, no, it was just a, a recreational thing, you know, you know, and then it turned to another thing, you know, okay. after that, it progressed after that. But uh, no, I mean, not really nothing I've seen, it just a recreational thing for the, for, for the soldiers. Okay. okay. So you was addicted before you even came home? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yes. So what problem did the, um, serve, uh, did the uh, armed forces, what, what problem was you facing that would get you to the point where it's, uh, you had to use something uh, um, other than um, your own personal um, spiritual energy to overcome problems? What draw you to the cocaine in the service? Well, one thing, I had a partner got killed. And uh, he got uh, 
a gun, main gun went off, the shell exploded inside the vehicle mm -hmm. and killed him. And, uh, and from that day on, you know, they just, you know, like I said, it became a respirational thing. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, we, you know, like a, it, it was just a bad, you know, it, it was a bad memory with him, okay? Yeah. And, and I started using uh, from, from hash to cocaine. You know, in the service. In the service. Mm -hmm. Jerry, uh, what was the um, um, experience like where you was in the service? Was this drinking? Because I'm, I'm known for a fact that that was recreation. That was norm in the service uh, to get together after the routine and then meet up somewhere in the mess hall or whatever and just drink. Is that what happened to you? Yeah, yeah. B before I joined the military, I was already uh, mm. well experienced with drug use. I started using it when I was 12. Uh, by the time I joined the military, I was, like I said, I was already well experienced at drug use. Um, I never really drank much until I joined the military. And but like you said, it was a matter of recreation. It's just what we did when there was nothing to do, we drank. So I came back from the military with a drug and an alcohol habit. Okay. So, so you blended in in the military? Oh, yes. oh yeah. Oh, oh. Okay, so this, it sounds to me that that was a norm? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. well, absolutely it was, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so was the pressure that immense that you would draw you to uh, um, uh, a, a drug or uh, alcohol to, to, to medicate your feelings or? Yeah, but one thing about us, uh, we was trained killers and they have uh, our uh, troops out there, aerial beautification, you know, you, you know, here go a million dollar man out there he planting a flower. <laughs> You know what I'm okay. saying? You know, uh, on, on downtime and something okay. like that. You know what I'm saying? So, right. yeah, I mean, so, I mean, a lot of guys, so, uh, drinking was the normal thing. Yeah. You know? mm. All right. Well, listen, man, we, we, we absolutely, this is, this is a great conversation. And uh, uh, listen, we, we're going to, at this point, listen, we want to thank uh, Jerry so much for, for being on the show. And uh, we know that your, your story and, and, and God has gotten you. We're we praying for you to continue in your recovery. Uh, and to know that God is able to do that. Yes. Uh, but listen, we got some we got some more conversation coming up and we're going to be right back right after these words. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. God's World, a Detroit institution at West 7 Mile in Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, pine envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. Welcome back to Ask the Messengers. Again, I am Pastor Lester Lewis, your host today. We are talking about veterans in recovery. And it is so important to understand uh, that those who are defending our country also have issues that they're dealing with, such as addictions, and they are working their way through recovery as well. Mm -hmm. And so they need our prayer support, but they also, uh, we wanna provide information to those who may be struggling. Listen, I want you to take a look at this testimony of what one of, the, of, our, of our veterans is going through or has gone through in his recovery. The worst day I ever had using drugs other than waking up with a hangover was when I did the, uh, when I was doing my crystal meth binge and I can remember on the come down, my heart would stop beating and I would wake myself up and force myself to breathe and just saying, if I die, I die, but I'm not calling an ambulance and getting stuck with the bill, so I might as well just tough it out and get through this. And that scared the crap out of me, or trying to OD in that um, after my first hip surgery on prescription pills. That was a scary experience. What made me quit was I was tired of the life I was living. I was tired of 
disappointing myself and disappointing my family and not living up to my potential. So I just decided to take a step back and try to see if living this clean way would actually help any or if it was still just all in my head. So I gave it a shot uh, five months ago. Yes, it is. This is my first time going through treatment process at all. All right, we are back and you are back. You're, you're here with Ask the Messengers and this is the pastoral takeover of the show. Uh, again, I am Pastor Lester Lewis and I uh, got with me Pastor Timothy Thompson. Pastor Thompson, once again, we are talking about these veterans and the recovery and it's a great conversation. Uh, and I see we've got a, a new guest with us right now. Yes. All right. Yes, this is one of our uh, supervisors for our peer-to-peer -peer program in, at Emmanuel House, and she's also alumni of Emmanuel House, and this is Miss Labor Smith. Hi. All right. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Nice to meet you. All right. All right, can't yeah. wait to get this conversation rolling again. Uh, John has already shared some information. Uh, yes. Can't wait to hear the rest. Okay. Amen. Uh, 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 John, um, um, now that you um, are in Emmanuel House, now that you done went through the process and in the process of recovery, um, what have you learned uh, that benefits you and will benefit others in recovery? I think the most important thing that I've learned is that I have value as a person mm. and that God makes no throwaway people, mm. you know, and that um, there is hope for everyone that is an addict right now. There is, a, there is a way out and it is possible to recover from your addiction um, and you don't have to be alone. I think that's the most important thing that I've learned more than anything. Right, because I'm, I'm sure that uh, in, in, in the course of what you were dealing with, there were people, as you said, there were some people who didn't want to be bothered with you and um, they, may have, they may have thought that your value or your worth was, was lowered, mm -hmm. but in, in God's sight, your value was still top notch you still were important to him, you still were valuable to him. And so uh, to know that that, that, that is in, in, in your recovery, that that is now the, the mindset that God doesn't make any throwaways. Right. Everything, everyone is important. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's great, that's great. Yes, yes. So now you don't blame the um, armed forces for your you know, choices and your mistakes. Oh no, I don't blame anyone for my choices. I did it myself. It was all me. Um, I was I blame I blame the military. I blame my family. I blame society. I blame the economy. Hmm. I blamed everything on my addiction except me. Right. It was my choices that got me to that point. Nothing else did. Oh, great, Labor. Yes. Uh, um, you are alumni of Emmanuel House. I am. Eight so that years. Means eight years. My my my. <laughs> so so um, what was your lifestyle before, and what was your drug of choice? Before coming into um, the recovery process, my, it started off as crack cocaine. So maybe about a 15 run, year run of smoking crack cocaine, it, it went into a heroin addiction, which took over. Um, I slowly stopped smoking crack and heroin became my choice of drugs. And I would say over a span of 25 years, I was living a lifestyle of 24 hours, seven days a week, using. So what difficulty does it, did it cause in your life? Well, it definitely, it severed my relationship with my children, with my family, with society as a whole. I was just um, separated from life. I had, a, it, was, it was like living two lives in one because what was going on in the normal world, it didn't affect me because I was in my isolation of getting high. Nothing else mattered. It didn't matter who was president. It didn't matter if it was a war. None of that stuff mattered. Going to the grocery store, only thing that mattered was for me to continue using and to not be sick. So now, Labor, I mean, and obviously we're talking about, uh, you, you're a veteran, of course. Uh, now, have, have you, I know there's enough strain on women as it is in mm -hmm. the military. So did your start as a result of your military service or was it prior to? No, 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 I, didn't. I came into the program because he, he, one thing that Pastor does do is he will accept. Oh, okay, okay. He, gotcha. It's the only a, a few select number of people that he will accept that are non-veterans. Okay. And I was blessed to be one of them. Oh, um, right. I kind of pressed my way into Emmanuel House. I called yes. for about three months while All I was right. in right. another right. program because of the success rate that I heard and the fact that it was um, a God-centered program and I knew that that's where 
God wanted me to be. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. But my military um, experience was on the streets. On of the street. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, so now that you had the experience uh, uh, yes. uh, of um, a, d a drug addiction, now that you are supervisor yes. of the peer to peer yes. uh, um, program at Emmanuel House, um, how did your past experience is helping the vets now uh, um, in their in their process of recovery? Well, one thing that we, we've learned in this process um, in substance use disorder is that a person who has a lived experience with a certain type of lifestyle can better help those who are struggling to find a new way and get out of a type of lifestyle that, um, of addiction, alcohol, drugs, gambling, whatever it may be. I, we, we've learned from statistics that a person who's lived and found a way out can better help and serve a person who's seeking to help. Amen, amen. And John, now that you are a vet, because I know one of the um, issues that vets have that they would not discuss other th things in the military unless it's another vet. Mm -hmm. Right, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh -huh. yes. So what, what, what uh, um, positive uh, um, information do you bring to uh, uh, the program as being a peer-to-peer -peer specialist? Well, um, I can tell you that I am no different than any other vet that's addicted to a substance. I'm nobody special. I am a peer coach because I was blessed to be given that job. I was asked to do it, and I, I gratefully accepted it. Um, I can, I hope that I can help a guy even to improve his life uh, by encouraging him, letting him know that he's not the only one, mm. he's not alone that I, I'm there for him. If nobody else is, I can be there for him. Right. So Pastor Thompson, listen, if we, if we could just, in, in this moment, if, if you could say anything right now uh, with as, as brief words as possible, what would you say to someone who's watching, who may be either struggling or knows of someone who is struggling, uh, that they may be a vet or, or just an average person, mm -hmm. what would you say to them right now? There is so much help out there. All you got to do is look for it. Um, you see advertisements on TV all the time. To call, call that number. Um, reach out. Don't be ashamed. The worst thing you can do is not do anything. If nothing changes, nothing changes. Amen. Amen. Um, one of the things that I would say is that there is hope. That there is no addict that cannot find a new way to live because I was a hopeless using addict and I never thought that I would find a way to live without the use of drugs and I know that if I can do it that any addict can do it all right well listen we are again this this conversation is wonderful we want to thank both of our guests for their input for their testimony and for their story Thank you guys so much for your bravery, not only uh, for, the, for, the, for your military service, uh, John, but also for the fact that you're brave enough to move into recovery. Uh, and we just want to thank you so much. All right, listen, we're going to be right back uh, with our final comments and our final prayer. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. God's World, a Detroit institution at West 7 Mile in Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, tied envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for tuning in to Ask the Messengers. We need your financial support to keep this program on the air. Would you please send your tax deductible donation to Greater Love Christian Center. Attention, Ask the Messengers. 18400 Schaefer Highway. 
Detroit, Michigan, 48235. And for online donations, please visit our website at www.askthemessengers.com. And welcome back. Listen, we're at our final uh, comments section and reflection time. And uh, Pastor Thompson, listen, we've been talking about this thing, a recovery for veterans, and uh, really it's recovery for anyone. Uh, and and what, what's your heart on this thing? What's, what's, what's the, what can you just tell someone right now uh, that, that's struggling and that needs some help? Yes, and one thing I have to know that recovery is spiritual. Amen. So you can't recover without God. Amen. Right. It doesn't matter what God you have as long as it's loving and caring. And when you understand that, that means you have to humble yourself to admit the truth that you got a problem. And, and, and he stopped blaming like uh, John was talking about the military and so forth. No, this is your problem. I mean, I used to blame my dad, but my dad didn't went nowhere for 22 years while I was putting that needle in my arm. Right. Amen. Right. So I have to take responsibility. So I'm like the prodigal son. Come to. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. When you come yeah. to, amen, realize that there is a God that's waiting for you. You ain't waiting for him. Right. He's waiting for you. That's right. And in that story that you talk about, because, you know, we, this is the preacher section right here, y'all. Yes. Uh, in, in that story, you know, we call it the prodigal son, but it's really the loving father. The loving father. He's there even after he's gone through all that drama yes. uh, out there feeding the pigs and out there doing all that crazy stuff, spending his money up. But the father was always looking for him. Amen. Hallelujah. And so that's the wonderful thing. Yes. Uh, and so, you listen, one of the things that we have, we, have, we absolutely must realize is that uh, the woman with the issue of blood in the Bible, it says that she pressed her way toward Jesus. And so we want to encourage you, no matter where you are, no matter what you're dealing with, don't stop. Press your way because Jesus is able to set you free. Amen. In fact, she said to herself, if I can just touch, touch. the hem of his garment, yes. I don't even need to throw my arms around him. All I need to do is just touch a little bit of it. Yes. And so we realize that Jesus has enough healing in the hem of his garment that no matter what you're going through, he can set you free. Amen. So listen, we want to give God the final word as we always do here at Ask the Messenger, uh, but we also want you to know, uh, feel free your support is, is absolutely welcome and needed. Any way you want to support, we would greatly appreciate it. The information is on the screen. But let's give the Lord the final word. Let's pray yes. because someone needs to hear this. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, yes. we thank you so much for your love, for your grace, and your mercy. And today, Lord, we recognize that there is someone who needs you. They're struggling with addiction or they're in recovery and they need your help to continue the race. Because your word says the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to those who endure and hold out to the end. And now, oh Father, we pray and place their concern in your hand, and we know that you're able to set them free, because whom the Son set free is free indeed. In Jesus' name, be blessed.